Hey guys, Barrett here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're talking about the top 10 most common intermediate player mistakes in pickleball. Now, I've made every mistake on this list, so you know I know how it feels, I know how it is. I think it's important that when you're making these mistakes, try to remember the video, remember the things that you've learned in the past, apply those things on the court, and you'll be much, much better. Mistakes aren't that bad, right? It's when you make them over and over again that it becomes bad. So these are in no particular order. Let's get started with the first one. All right, let's start out with the good one. A very common intermediate player mistake to make is hitting your drop shots way too low. Okay, oftentimes what you'll see is people will um, not necessarily get the ball up very high and they'll hit it really low and it's sort of, it's not even a drive, it's kind of a halfway between a drop and a drive. The problem is that as you advance in pickleball, people are gonna be able to do stuff with those kinds of shots. So on the fourth shot, they're gonna be able to whip that thing over or do like a roll, like a roll shot like that or what have you. So it's very important to, when that ball is coming over, make sure that you're getting low, you swing through the ball and get a little bit of loft on that thing. If you wanna take it to the next level, try to put a little bit of backspin, try to slice the ball just a little bit and that'll help to make it bounce even lower. So as you advance in pickleball, super important to get more loft on those drops. Try that, try to hit it in that kitchen and eventually you're gonna get used to it and it's gonna pay off in the long run. All right, number two, dinking too high. This is a big one. Now, what I mean by that is not sending the ball up too high, it's when the ball bounces, it bounces up high. As you advance in pickleball, what people will do is when the ball bounces really high, they tend to drive or sort of flick the ball over. That's why it's, it's very, very important that when you're dinking, you're not just hitting the ball up high and then letting it bounce high. Um, it's actually uh, called dead dinking. I got that from Jordan Briones at Primetime Pickleball, link down below. If you all haven't checked out Primetime, definitely need to do so but that's kind of what he was talking about is dead dinking the ball is just kind of dead it's got no spin on it and then they're able to just kind of flick the ball over so let me just kind of show you what that looks like here so if she hits the ball up high and the ball bounces high in the kitchen like this i can just flick it over like that because the ball is high enough to where i could because the angle is good enough to get to get it over right so like this, I can just flick it over like that. So instead, if I were to be that person and, go, and going like this, instead, I'm gonna try to push that paddle forward like that so that it doesn't bounce up very high. See that? See how I'm pushing the ball forward? That's how you do that. Now this leads perfectly into my third mistake here, number three, is lack of spin. So as a beginner, you were probably told many times, and it's probably a good thing that spin is a bit overrated. Eh, I mean, as a beginner, yeah, you kind of just want to learn how to get the ball over the net, but hey, you're trying to get better, right? We need to put more spin on the ball. Now, you've got top spin and you've got back spin. The easier one to start with and the one that's most natural is going to be the back spin. It's going to be the slices. So try the slices first. All right, so I'm gonna just cut straight across like that, okay? That's gonna help you get backspin on the ball. It'll help that ball to bounce lower. As I said in the last mistake, the ball tends to, um, if you're doing the dead dinking stuff, It'll bounce kind of high, but if you've got the spin on there, it won't bounce as high. Now, forehand top spin is a much, much, much more difficult to do. You want to hinge, hinge the forehand, and then come straight up. Hinge the forehand, come straight up. Don't worry if they don't have a tremendous amount of spin on them. What you're trying to avoid is this where the ball just kind of comes up and then bounces high, okay? <clears throat> like I said, the forehand stuff is way more difficult than the backhand stuff. 
All right, number four, lack of pattern recognition. This is huge, and this is more of a strategic or a sort of tactical kind of thing. This really pops up in tournaments, but when you're playing with someone, it's very important to recognize patterns that are happening on the court, okay? So as an example, if you're playing with someone that has a tremendous amount of, of backspin, right? And you're noticing that they're hitting their backspin shots over and over and over again, and they're messing you up, that's a pattern that you need to recognize early on. So that then you should be able to avoid their backhand. So just as an example, if I cross court dink over here, all right, so just as an example here, if I'm just constantly hitting my back, my uh, slice backhand that I love, uh, like that, as you notice, it's a pretty brutal shot, right? So the last thing you want to do is if someone's really good at that stuff, you don't want to keep feeding them that kind of, that kind of shot. It also counts for strategic errors, right? So if all this, if your opponents have been stacking the whole game and then all of a sudden they're not stacking anymore, that's something that you have to recognize right then and there. Hey, they're on stacking, the pattern has changed, we need to respond accordingly. All right, number five, lack of serve changeup. This is a really big one. The thing about doing the same serve over and over and over again is that, yeah, you're consistent with it and that's great. However, you're kind of training your opponent how to hit your serve. And that can be a problem because as they get better hitting your serve, they can make better returns. The better returns they make, the harder your third is going to be. So don't be afraid to change up your serve every now and then. So for example, if you just have a regular old serve and you just hit it over just regularly, try doing a lob serve. It'll, you, you'll be shocked at how easily it messes them up. So instead, do a lob serve like that. Also, change up your positioning on the court. So try serving from the center line and also try serving from the sideline over here. The sideline over here is gonna give you a much different angle than as if you were serving on the center line. Those kinds of change-ups are great. You'd be really surprised how easy it is just to get a nice little point right when you're starting to get the momentum in the middle of a match. It can be very, very useful. Okay, number six, and something on the, kind of the same line as the serve is lack of shot arsenal. Having a wide, array of shots to use in a pickleball match is really important because as I said earlier, the more you hit the same shot over and over and over again, the more you're helping your opponent train how to hit your shot. So a great way to do this is just be brave and try something new. As an example, I really don't do lobs very often. It's a bad habit that I've gotten into, but you know, when you're in a practice match or you're just warming up, just try to lob every now and then and see what happens. Okay, so if I'm dinking here, right, try the volley lob as well. So do two different versions of it. So I'll do the regular kind of ground stroke lob like this, and then I'll also do the, uh, the volley lob. So when the ball's coming over, just wait for that shot and then do it. Now, the thing about this though, is that you kind of have to trust yourself a little bit. So I know it can be awkward to try a shot you never tried before, but you gotta break through that barrier first and foremost. Once you break through that initial barrier of being sort of nervous about doing a new shot, it'll start to become more and more comfortable. And as you do that, you'll gain more confidence and then you'll be able to use that in tournament play. It turns you into, into an unpredictable player and that is deadly on the pickleball court. All right, number seven, and one that trips me up every now and then is bad footwork. Footwork is huge in pickleball. I want to talk about one aspect of footwork, but just in general, try to untangle your feet. Keep your feet sort of spread out. Think in strides. Don't think in, in terms of steps. But let me discuss one bit of footwork that happens all the time, which is the lunge over here on the backhand. I see this all the time where people will try to get a shot over here and they'll do something like this where they'll cross over with their right foot. Now, if you're doing a slice, a backhand slice and trying to go cross court, that's okay. That's what you have to do for a slice like that. But if it's just a regular dink over here, right, then that's the last thing you want to do. So if she dinks in my backhand, I'm going to lunge instead like this. You see how my foot is over? That's how you want to do that. Okay. So see how I'm lunging. I'm not crossing over my foot. 
you see that? It's like that. I know I hit it in the net, but notice how I'm lunging like that. It, man, it really gets your quads going, that's for sure. So just remember that if you get a, if you get a backhand shot, don't cross over your feet. Just lunge. It's very simple. One step. Your anchor foot, my right foot over here, doesn't even need to move. Okay? So think about that. Think about things and strides then steps. <laughs> All right, number eight, playing tight. Oh man, I, we could do an entire podcast episode on just playing tight, but it's something that crops up every now and then, especially, I mean, with anybody really, but with intermediate players, it seems to be something that they don't quite realize what's going on. And I, and I get that, of course. Playing tight just means that you're trying to play the game safe. So if you're in a high level match of some kind or an important match, I should say, Oftentimes people will try to play safe, right? And they just don't swing through the ball very well. And they don't, they're not really being themselves. Okay, so let me just give you an example. Let's say that I'm doing, I'm feeding her some thirds and she hits them. An example of playing safe would just be like going like this and not really swinging through the ball and being very timid. Okay, in a tournament setting that's gonna kill you. Instead, we wanna be ourselves, loosen up. Go for those shots, right? Don't be timid. Be yourself. In a tournament setting, easier and said than done, obviously, but it's very, very important that you loosen up, hop around a little bit, and hit those shots because you know that you can make them, okay? So if you feel like you're being tight, if you feel like you're trying to play too safe, don't do it. It's gonna ruin your game, it's gonna ruin your time. Be yourself. All right, let's go back to some dinking. Number nine is body dinking. I know it can be very, very, um, tempting to use your opponent as your target, right? So if I'm dinking back and forth over here, it's very common just to use my opponent as my target, right? I can just hit it right to her. Easy. There's a target, right? You can even target the foot over here. The problem is though, is that you're not moving your opponent at all. A big part of pickleball is control over your opponent. And in this case, I'm not really controlling my opponent. I'm getting the ball over, but hey, you're trying to become an advanced player, right? So we've got to change up things. Hit it to where they're not instead. That's going to get them to move. And when they move, that's when things can happen. So very, very important to get out of the habit of dinking to the opponent and instead dink to where they're not. You can almost even tape like little X's on the court during practice matches or whatever and that will help you have sort of a visual aid to force yourself to do that. So again, uh, start to dink to where they're not. Really deadly stuff once you get used to it. All right, number 10, it's pace. Pace is a big part of pickleball or the mistake is not respecting the pace and not trying to reset the pace. So when someone hits a hard shot at you, they're trying to make you pop up the ball. That's really the whole point of the drive or the flick or the roll or whatever. It's just to get you to pop up the ball. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for that. If you have a hard shot being hit at you, you can try to hit it hard back if you can, but most of the times you're gonna have to reset by having soft hands and blocking the shot. Okay, so if if I hit a hard shot at Linda here, she's gonna block it like that. She's not gonna fall for it. It's the last thing she wants to do is fall for it like that. She's blocking these beautifully. Now she could have hit that one hard back, but, well, she did hit that hard back because she could, which is great. If you can't hit it hard back, then you, you want to do that. But if it's too hard, then it's the last thing that you wanna do. Good. So if that, again, if it's a dead dink, I'm looking for those dead dinks. If I see one, I'm gonna to try to hit it hard back over. Good. That was really good. Now I, I ended up getting her on the backhand, but notice how the first one was a nice little block. I want her to pop up the ball. That's all I'm trying to do is get her to pop it up. See. Notice how she reset that. <clears throat> now I can't do anything. As a young guy, 
who can hit the ball pretty hard. I can't do a single thing about that. It's a great way of diffusing people's power. All right, guys, those are the top 10 most common intermediate player mistakes that I see out on the courts. Once again, I make these mistakes sometimes. It happens. We all forget about these things. Try not to worry about it when you make these mistakes. Don't get down on yourself. Just try to let it happen over and over and over again. It's that pattern that really matters. Guys, thank you so much for joining me in this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Head on over to pickleballkitchen.com if you want a bunch more stuff. Got a podcast, articles, all that sort of stuff. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.